Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this lecture, we are going to discuss uh, astronomy and astrology. So what are the differences and what are the similarities between these two? And we'll look at how that has changed over time. Uh, what we see is a very distinct difference today. Uh, most uh, any astronomer would not want to be called an astrologer. Uh, they would find that to be very offensive that astrology is something that is not even considered a science. However, not that long ago, as in hundreds to a thousand years ago, there was little difference between an astronomer and an astrologer. So what we're going to look at in this lecture is take a little bit of a look and compare how these uh, work and how they have changed over the ages. So starting off, let's look at some of the basics. What do we mean by astronomy and astrology? Well, astrology itself here is what do we mean by it? It is the studies of the different objects that wandered through the sky. So there were seven known objects that wandered through the sky separate from the stars. The stars always retained their same positions relative to each other. So the constellations that we saw were always exactly the same. However, there were seven objects that wandered through these and these gave us our days of the week. And these objects were the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So the Sun and the Moon and the five planets that were known. And they wandered through the sky, so they had special importance and had a special significance to uh, ancient peoples. Now, the beginnings of this, again, were quite different than what we look at today. And it was thought that these could have an impact on people's lives so that they could uh, affect how people's lives worked and could make predictions of what would happen in someone's life based on the positioning of the stars. So some of the things that we know on astrology uh, you may be familiar with and that would be the constellations of the zodiac so you're probably familiar with these the constellations of the zodiac are actually astronomical in nature so uh, we have our term zodiac there uh, but they are actually astronomical in nature you will recognize these if you've ever followed a horoscope at all things like Aquarius Pisces Aries Taurus and so on uh, what was so special about these constellations it's very interesting because they are not the brightest constellations in the sky in fact some of them have very few bright stars Pisces for example Aries do not have any really bright stars uh, and neither does Cancer and Libra, a lot of these have very few or no bright stars in them. Others might have a couple bright stars, but they were important not because of what they were, well, the stars they were made up of, but because of where they were located. And these are the constellations that the sun, the moon, and the planets will move through over the course of the year. So why did they become important to astrology is that they were the constellations where you would find these wandering objects where you would find the sun where you would find the moon and where you would find the planets were all within the 12 constellations of the zodiac that we see here. Now what is really happening there if we want to look at reality is that the sun and the moon and the planets are not moving through those constellations. What is actually moving is the Earth. So the Earth's motion is changing the position of the sun. So we would see because here's the sun and here's the Earth. So in January, we see the sun towards the constellation of Sagittarius. And we would see other constellations high in the night sky. So this would tell us what constellation the sun is in. But it's the Earth that's doing the moving so that a few months later we would be over here and we now instead of seeing this constellation of Sagittarius as the location of the sun we would see Aquarius and then a couple months later we would see it as Aries and so on around and repeating this cycle every year. So that causes the changing position of the sun in the sky. So the sun appears to move through uh, the constellations. And what would your sun sign would be the location of the sun on the day you were born. Now, 
We also know that the solar system is flat, that if you draw it on a piece of paper, that's a pretty good approximation of reality. And that means that the planets will also follow this same path. So not only does the sun go through these 12 constellations, but so will the moon and the planets. So let's look a little bit more about what this means for astrology. And we look at natal astrology, which was the uh, one of the early astrologies here. And that was where were these objects at the moment of your birth. So exactly when you were born, not just where was the sun as in your uh, sun uh, solar astrology, but where was the where was the moon? And where were the five planets at that time? And that was said to determine what your personality would be and, you know, what your life would be like. Now, you know, that's quite different from the astrology that you tend to look at today. Today, you look at astrology, you know, you get a couple sentences based on the month in which you were born and what constellation that is associated with. The original astrology was much more complicated looking at not just the position of the sun here, but also the moon and the planets and those would all have an impact on your uh, personality and your destiny. Now this was developed by the Greek astronomers that we've talked about in previous lessons and uh, Claudius Ptolemy one of those astronomers that we talked of, talked about actually wrote a treatise on astrology as well. We talked about his Almagest which was his great work that explained the motions of the planets and how to be able to predict those. But this is really the basis of astrology today is still based on this work of Ptolemy. And at Ptolemy's time, uh, there was really little difference between astronomy and astrology. And I mentioned that before there was they were essentially one and the same, and that an astronomer and an astrologer were, were quite the same. And that is very different than what we have today. So let's take a look at some of these horoscopes and what we can do. Um, the sky for a horoscope, the sky, the sky is divided into 12 sections. So when we look at a horoscope, we have 12 sections, and these are the constellations of the zodiac. On average, the sun spends about one month in each constellation. Now that's on average. In reality, if you look at the if you look at the horoscopes, they are all divided into one month sections. In reality, if you look up where the sun is, the sun can spend as little as a week in some of the constellations, and it can spend more than a month in other constellations. So they're not actually in reality, they're not actually uniform. Now we also have talked about precession. How does this change? What does this do to the horoscopes? Remember that precession is slowly changing the position of the Earth's celestial poles. So it's changing the coordinate systems and changing the positioning that we see. That has over, you know, since the time of Ptolemy, moved us about one zodiac sign off from what the chart would say. So for example, if you look up May 6th, that would normally you consider someone a Taurus who was born on May 6th, but the sun on that day would be in the constellation of Aries still. So we're about one constellation off because of precession slowly changing the coordinates uh, and slowly changing the positioning of the constellations over time. So what we used uh, a thousand years ago is quite different than what we would have to use today. But we're still base our astrology is still based on the original horoscopes. So if you're born on May 6th, you're considered a Taurus. However, the sun was truly in Aries when you were born. So what this means is that the newspaper or internet horoscopes that we may look at are uh, based on just the sun sign. Where was the sun when you were born and where was it according to the ancient horoscopes? This would mean that essentially 8% of the population has exactly the same horoscope prediction every day. So uh, almost 1 in 10 people will have the same uh, prediction as you. And it'd be odd that 10% of the people, uh, hundreds of millions of people, would have exactly the same day. That would not be something that would be scientifically possible. <laughs> 
Now in truth that is very simplified. That is not what a complete horoscope would be. If you do a complete horoscope again you use not only the sun which is the sun sign. That's when you look up that small uh, brief blurb that says what your day is going to be like. But you also look up the moon and each of the five known planets that would then give you uh, tell you a lot more information about how your how your life would go. So it also has to be interpreted and it does depend on judgment as well as well. So this is kind of what removes it from being a science is that there is a lot more judgment involved and that the interpretation can vary from astrologer to astrologer. So one person may interpret uh, the position of Jupiter when you're born is one thing and another one may a lot may interpret it slightly differently or somewhat differently. And that gives uh, a sort of flexibility in the horoscope, but they don't necessarily match up exactly. There is not an exact position that says if Jupiter is exactly here at this location, then this is what will happen. There is some judgment there, and that kind of removes it from being a science like astronomy, which would predict specifically where the planet is going to be, and your model would have to then uh, show that. Now let's look at how these are uh, have adjusted over time. Again, from the ancient Greeks, the times time of Ptolemy uh, until the Renaissance, these were really very similar things, and by that I mean that astrology and astronomy were not all that different. People like Tycho, Kepler, and Galileo actually cast horoscopes as well and were astrologers in addition to being astronomers. How well they actually believed in the astrology is uh, a good question and may be questionable, but they did cast horoscopes based on what Ptolemy had done before. Uh, shortly after that, by the 1700s, they began to diverge and became separate. Astronomy was simply the study of the sky. Astrology was the study of the sky's perceived impact on our lives here on Earth. So how did that those positionings affect us here on Earth? Astronomy would study and predict where the planets would be. Astrology became how those would impact us here on Earth. So by the 1700s, these were beginning to diverge significantly. And there was a big difference at that point between an astronomer and an astrologer. Now we look at astrology as being a pseudoscience and what do we mean by that? Well a pseudoscience here is a subject that seems to be scientific or purports to be scientific and it may use scientific terminology. A lot of the terminology of astrology and astronomy uh, is very similar. That terminology is the same. However, astrology is not based on rigorous testing. So a pseudoscience would not have the same rigorous testing that an actual science would. When we try to make predictions of the positions of the planets, we make those predictions and then we test them out and find out are they correct? Is our model correct or do we need to make modifications to it? Statistical studies done on astrology have shown that there is really no relationship between someone's horoscope and their lives. In reality, most horoscopes, if you read them, are vague enough that you can find some truth in it. You will find something that happens to you perhaps that day that fits and that you could then interpret to fit with the horoscope. But in reality, if you cast the actual horoscopes, the full horoscopes, the predictions are no better than random chance. So let's summarize here what we've looked at in this lesson and that would be that what is what are these astronomy is really this or sorry astrology is the study of the perceived impact of the positions of these objects these seven objects here on our lives. Astronomy, on the other hand, is just the study of the celestial objects and their positions. Note the difference is this impact that we this impact on our lives is not something that astronomers even consider. So what, whether they are is not considered to have any impact at our on our lives. Uh, what we looked at was that astrology and astronomy were really very uh, similar in the distant past. And there was a times even again just a few hundred years ago where astronomers and astrologers were one and the same person.
Statistical studies have been done to look at astrology and have found that there is really no scientific basis for it, that the predictions that are made show no better than random chance of coming true, so are therefore no give no predictive value to uh, your future and your life. So that concludes our discussion of astronomy and astrology and looking at the example of astrology as a pseudoscience. We'll be back again next time to discuss some of the other uh, concepts in astronomy. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.